Assalamu alaikum. Have you ever wondered why some people seem to effortlessly succeed in business? Why some people, maybe like you, struggle to even get the courage to get your first sale? In this video, I'm going to explain the hidden traits that are holding you back, why they destroy business success, and how exactly they affect most beginners when it comes to business. And then, of course, what exactly to focus on to avoid being held back years and years. And this applies to business, but also any big goals that you're looking to achieve. And before we get into the meat of it, what is the iceberg effect? As you know, an iceberg, 80% of it is under the water. You can't see it. And that's where all the power and the weight of the iceberg is. But it's hidden. You can't see it. The same goes for why you're not achieving your goals. The things that you think are stopping you are above the surface. But the reality is it's those traits and those bad habits that are under the surface that are stopping you. And that's what we're going to cover here. And if you quit, no matter how many businesses or projects you start, You'll never get anywhere with them and you won't even build up the skills over time so you eventually get somewhere. But there is one trait that if you develop it, you'll never quit again, inshallah. So you know Thomas Edison, right? In the 1800s, he was working on developing the first practical light bulb that people could actually use. And he failed a lot, a lot of times, but he never actually gave up. Instead of looking for those quick results and just to get this done with and finish this invention, he saw it as a process that would naturally take time and naturally had to learn from every step of the way. And that's why he famously said, I've not failed. I've found 10,000 ways that it didn't work. He saw those 10,000 failures as steps towards learning what didn't work, what didn't work, what didn't work until he found success eventually. And so the thing that kept him going was was knowing that every time that he didn't make it, he learned something new that he could use later on. And also he had a vision for the light bulb. He knew it could be done and he knew he could do it. He just had to keep going. You see, his success didn't come from one day having this amazing idea for how it could work. It was trial and error. It was building upon previous failures and learning each time one bit at a time. So the essential lesson that we need to learn from this is that if you have a long-term vision for what you want to achieve, and that vision is attractive enough and it's worth sacrificing for, then you're going to be able to stay put even when things aren't going great from the get-go. And number two, if you have the concept in your head that I need to be patient with this, this is something that needs time, it's something very valuable and therefore it's worth putting time into it like a business, and you learn every single step of the way, then you're not going to give up. You're not going to quit anymore because every time you get rejected, every time something doesn't work, you see it as a learning process. So keep trying, never quit. And remember, it's never considered a failure unless you quit. And to be honest with you, most of your success will not come in month one or even year one. When it comes to business, it's more likely going to be year five, six, seven, 10, 20, that you're really going to reap the rewards. So you have to be aware of that from the beginning. This next trait could be a major reason for your downfall, not only in business, but in life in general. And even worse, in the akhirah. And fixing it could be that first step to getting your success finally. So if on Fridays you read Surah Al-Kahf, then you'll know the story of the man that had two gardens. Allah gave him lots of wealth. That's how he had two gardens. These gardens, you know, they grow fruits, he can sell those fruits, he can eat the fruits, like this guy's loaded. He had two gardens full of grapes and they even had their own river, their own source of water. So like, what did he even have to do to work on them? But of course, the man didn't take it in the right way and he became arrogant and he became boastful. He even went to the other man and said to him straight to his face, Meaning, I've got more wealth than you, I'm more respected than you. Like, he's just putting it straight to his face. Imagine the ego and the pride. Instead of taking it with gratitude and turning to Allah and giving and making sure he's grateful, he actually took it as a way to hurt people and show people, yeah, I'm better than you. I've got this, I've got this, and you don't have it. And then after doing this, of course, and going even further and questioning whether Allah would even question him and whether that he would lose these material things and he was saying all of this garden stuff, it's from me and I got it. After all that, you know what happened. Allah destroyed him, his gardens and everything, and it all went to ruin. The important point here is to be grateful for what you have right now. Even if you're seeking business goals, you're seeking a better life, you're seeking to just make basic money just to be able to get married, whatever it is that you think is very basic, remember, Allah gave that to you and you've got to be grateful for it because most likely if you're watching this video, you're in the top 10, the top 20% most wealthy and comfortable people on the planet. So you have a lot to be grateful for and even if you weren't, you'd have a lot to be grateful for. 
This man's arrogance blinded him and ultimately led him to ruin. But it can do the opposite for you. It can make you higher. It can make you better off. Allah says, in If you're grateful, then I'll give you more. And he said more, like just open, open-ended more. With no limits to it, I'll give you more. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Man Whoever is humble towards Allah, then Allah will raise him up in his status. So we need to be humble. We need to be grateful though. We need to think of gratitude as a way of getting success. And this is one of the key hidden traits under the iceberg. Now with this next trait, I can 100% guarantee you that if you don't have this, you will fail, I'm afraid. So according to the Washington Post, only about 19% of people have tried to start a business. A lot of people, of course, they're comfortable in life. They don't want to get out of their comfort zone. They've been on that treadmill of school to uni, uni to work. And then once you're in work, there's no next step to take and you just stay on it. And not only are they in their job for decade after decade, they're not necessarily spending time developing themselves so they could hope to go higher and higher in that field. They're not investing time or money in developing themselves. So generally, they settle for what they've got, the pay they've got, the salary they've got, the place they've got in their job, in their career. But naturally, we know to get any with business or to get out of your career or to get ahead in your career you need to put in hard work and you need to invest ultimately money time or both to be honest and we know success doesn't come without hard work but what does hard work entail it entails starting at least starting you're not even going to put in hard work or any work if you don't start and if you have a block at that point so starting i could say is the most important skill to develop if you're an overthinker if you're a procrastinator you need to overcome that or you will never succeed i'm someone personally who is an overthinker that's how I am. I'm very analytical. I'm very anxious kind of person, always looking for what could go wrong, what could be negative. But I had to fight that. And I still fight that today. Business entrepreneurship is the art of starting, starting something new, trying something new when that doesn't work. Even today, when I've been running my business, alhamdulillah, full time for six, seven years, I'm still starting new things all the time. When I want to start those new things, I procrastinate. I overthink. I fight with myself about what could go wrong. But then I remember, how did I get to the place I am now, alhamdulillah? is from kicking those thoughts to the curb and just starting, just going for it. Taking the first step, then learning what's next. Okay, that's what I need to do. Then the next step. That's how I've done it, alhamdulillah. So I'm saying this to say, start now, even if you don't feel you're the most qualified, because you only need to be qualified to take that first step. And even if you don't do that, great, you can learn. You can do it again and learn and do it again and learn until that first step, you can do it. Then the next step, go for it. Then the third step, don't overthink. Don't think too far ahead. You have to get good at starting and pushing away those thoughts in your head that cause you to procrastinate. Of course, you miss a hundred percent of the chances that you never take. Now changing these traits or developing the new positive ones will get you unstuck for sure, bi'ithnillah. But beyond having these traits, you actually need to start a business in the right way, doing the right tasks at the beginning. And that's why right now you need to watch this next video of how I would start a business from zero if I was starting again today. What I explain in that video is going to save you loads of time, loads of money, and it's Inshallah, it's going to stop you being one of those people who start and fail and give up on business completely to becoming one of those people who go for it. They get a bit of success, then a bit more, then a bit more, and then they grow and they go beyond and beyond, inshallah. So check that video out right now. I'll see you there.